Hi friends, good week. Uh, Vladimir here with you. Welcome to the weekly review. Uh, this is the first week of Feb of uh, March, actually, the last uh, two days of uh, February, and uh, we are about to have the continue of the U.S. dollar war. And uh, as I did uh, during the last two weekly reviews, uh, I want to do the same this time. Uh, and start with uh, analyzing the US dollar index. This is the daily chart as you can see on the uh, on the screen and please let's uh, let's try to understand what's going on, right? We have a double bottom here. The same double bottom I was talking about f a few days uh, actually and uh, two weeks about the weekly chart. This is the daily chart, right? We have the double bottom. It's a kind of, it's not exactly the, you know, the, 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 the wanted and the needed the engulfing, but it is a kind of engulfing. And we can see with this weeks from the upper side that the bulls are closing the position. Right? So, sorry, sorry, I beg your pardon, that the bears are closing their positions, right? Because every close of this position take the price up push up and push up and push up. We see this week. Right? So, um, and the MACD also points a potential double bottom. If it's a double bottom, so uh, the first target to be reached is uh, the 78.60, the upper boundary of this channel. Right? The upper boundary of this channel. Right? And it, if it is so, it should be reached in uh, in about a week and a half, two weeks maximum, right? Uh, actually, it should uh, repeat the last uh, up move. If it's about to happen, that means that it will affect all the majors, especially the euro, the British pound, dollar franc, dollar Canadian, maybe, right? So we, uh, definitely a lot to uh, look for. The weekly chart also. Uh, I remind you, we also uh, are, uh, we also wait for this uptrend line to show us what it's going to be about. Okay? Uh, the, there is also a, a powerful bullish divergence, but there is still not bullish candle patterns. No engulfing, no hammer, no two double dodges yet here. Uh, nothing, all right, and then the MACD just uh, crossed uh, below the zero line. So it could take one, two uh, weeks ago uh, more, but uh, actually it it, it should uh, begin uh, soon. Uh, as as long as this line holds, I'm still bullish for the US dollar. But if this line will be broken and uh, we will have a weekly close below, that will be the final world. The final word of the U.S. dollar, right? So we are still waiting, and uh, all the uh, all the things going on in the Middle East uh, will definitely affect on the market. Will continue to affect, and the speculation about uh, uh, about potential entry of a U.S. Uh, army to Libya uh, would uh, would definitely lead for more and more speculations, uh, for more and more volatility about with the US dollar index and with the uh, oil prices of course and it will affect the dollar index so we definitely have to watch the uh, the behavior the act the price action actually of the US dollar this is the 4 hour chart right we are probably will see some flag pattern here and a break up as we can see the MACD despite of these two red uh, candles the MACD is still growing up right so uh, it could lead for um, for an up move on the US dollar and would lead for this engulfing to take the US dollar index up. But with this I'm going to the chart and uh, I want to start with uh, with the euro and the British pound these two and then I want to go for the dollar Canadian on the weekly chart I have some news there right? but still I want to start with the British pound against the dollar. On the weekly chart on the weekly chart, I remind you, we have this uh, bearish divergence, right? We have this bearish divergence. That means that it could take the British pound all the way down. 
and actually it could lead for the uh, continuing move, uh, movement into uh, in this uh, kind of triangle kind of triangle well i the investors are bullish for the british pound right they are bullish yet for the british pound and the fact that uh, three uh, from nine uh, members of the uh, Central Bank of Britain uh, pointed uh, to raise uh, the interest rate uh, should lead the British pound for an up move. But, but, but we should not actually uh, forget that the British pound uh, gr uh, GDP the, during the last week it uh, was uh, very bad, actually uh, worse than uh, than expected. Than expected minus half percent. It was uh, minus uh, oh that six percent. More and more news from Britain uh, become uh, bad, and it could take the British pound for the up uh, uh, for the down move, despite of all the expectations from the interest rate. If we go to the daily chart, we also can see that the British pound was blocked. Right was blocked on the uh, uh, on the uh, difficult resistance around 16250, uh, 163. Uh, the investors still look for the close above this uh, level to decide, uh, you know, to be sure that we are going up. As long as it it continues to move below this level, we will probably see more and more. Uh, Movements uh, in this uh, in this range, right between 159.70 and 153, uh, 163. Right, probably we'll see more and more movements here. Um, so what about the expectations? The the bearish pressure push it down, but the RSI still keeps to be above 50 level. The stochastic uh, kind of pointing down, right, but uh, still. Um, uh, we still have uh, bullish pressure because of the RSI, actually. Uh, how can we how can we trade it and how can we uh, uh, benefit from the British pound? Actually, so we should mark this range as I said between 150, uh, 59, 60, 50 uh, uh, actually because of the last low and the 163. Uh, we probably will continue to move betw in between these lines. If we go to the four-hour chart, then we can see that the two moving average of the um, uh, of the uh, MACD crossed down. That means bullish. Uh, that means bearish pressure, uh, and we can we could expect more down move. The last support line was broken uh, here actually, and it should. Uh, uh, should take the British pound to the previous uh, to the previous uh, support line, which is uh, 159.70 uh, plus minus, right? So uh, wh wh what can we expect? We can expect for a little more up move, maybe a block around the uh, uh, 20 moving average of the Bollinger Band, uh, maybe creation of uh, a hidden divergence here, but the British pound should continue. Uh, down at least to this level. Right? So let's see how the week will open. So we will, uh, we could uh, make uh, more uh, clever decisions. Right? This uh, resistance should now uh, block actually the British pound. The dollar, uh, the daily chart also confirms that. Okay, so uh, this is actually the expectations for the British pound to reach the previous uh, resistance. Once it will break it. It will be the, seed, the sign that we will go probably to see the next uptrend line being reached, right? Which is uh, here, right? Around 157.50, maybe even. Okay, so definitely a lot uh, to expect. The MACD is bearish, as we can see. Um, it's, it's going down. The the slope is powerful, so definitely a lot of uh, a lot uh, that we can expect. What about the euro dollar? Well, what else can we say, friends? This is the weekly chart. The weekly chart has its pressure, uh, has its bullish pressure, as we can see. Although the uh, the red moving average of the MSCD still didn't cross the uh, the zero line, so the the uh, bullish pressure actually is 
uh, not so bullish, let's call it this way. Right? On the daily chart, we have a double top on the critical level, and we have a divergence, right? And we have a divergence. We have a divergence on the MACD, we have the divergence on the RSI, we have divergence on the histogram of the MACD, not just the moving average, and also the stochastic. What does it mean? It means that probably the euro dollar will go down from these levels, and the risk reward should uh, should be good for this uh, uh, for this pair. Uh, the stuff should be placed above the uh, the uh, resistance, and the target should be re uh, reached here, close to 135 again, the first target. Uh, if it's uh, if it's a true uh, a true uh, resistance, a true divergence then it will take the euro all the way down again to 131. So uh, definitely uh, interesting week is uh, uh, are about uh, we are about to see on the euro dollar. Right? So this is my expectation uh, actually uh, for this pair. As long as it is below 138.50 and does not close the daily chart below above sorry, I am bearish from now. So uh, that's my expectation from the euro dollar. For the Conservative traders of you, you should, uh, as you can see, this is the four-hour chart. The, uh, we have the kind of uh, support here. If you want to be more conservative, wait it to be broken. Right? Wait it to be broken, and we, we could see some uh, attempt to to go up, maybe to 138 again uh, before the drop. But the expectations are bearish because of the bearish uh, divergence on the daily chart. And now I want to go to the interest, the most interesting pair, which is the dollar against the Canadian. Well, we have this, uh, actually, this support line here, right? Which is around uh, 097.50, 098.00, somewhere between. It does close below the 097, uh, 098, but it does not close below uh, 097.50. Well, I do expect the dollar Canadian to uh, to drop more, but once it uh, break this level, right? But the most interesting thing is this one, is this one, because it's a, a bullish butterfly pattern of a harmonic pattern on the weekly chart. It's very rare situation. It's very rare situation, but uh, it means that the uh, dollar Canadian would would probably fight these levels. Maybe even go to uh, a little lower here, little lower, but it should retrace from these levels all the way up at least to 101 level. At least it should, it could maybe go even to 106 level, which is the previous high here. So, definitely, definitely, definitely bullish expectations from the dollar Canadian. Uh, it looks like the uh, the bearish signs are uh, really uh, on the on their last leg. This level should be held at uh, the 096 level, maybe 095 level. These two levels should hold the maximum, the sorry, the minimum uh, down move from the Canadian dollar and uh, retrace this pair up. The uh, stochastic and the Bollinger bands of the bigger time frame are also. Uh, bullish uh, here because they reached the critical level, right? So it could continue to play here, such it did here, but the, uh, the jump up should arrive soon. And now I uh, go back to the uh, daily chart here. We can see that this support line was broken, right? We have a close here, but still the divergence, the still the bullish divergence is here. So. I do think that the dollar Canadian will probably uh, continue to fight around these levels, really. But uh, then it it would uh, retrace from this from the uh, last down move and make all the retracement up. And if it continues to go down, then I do want to see a break of 097.50 uh, and then uh, 096 and 095 would be targets. What about the next uh, interesting pairs? Uh, for example, the Australian dollar. Well, what else can we say actually about this uh, interesting pair? We do have this triangle, I remind you. 
right? <laughs> it's kind of wedge actually. Uh, the, the down boundary was never broken, such as the upper resistance around 10250. What what does it mean? Are we going to see another another uh, top here? Maybe, maybe it will be even be uh, reached here, combined with this bearish divergence. Right? Combined with this bearish divergence. Well, for the long run, for the long run, I am uh, bullish for uh, Australian dollar. I am bullish for the Australian dollar. But for the short run, uh, I would not. Um, I, I would. I will not be surprised if uh, it will uh, be stopped soon, and uh, we will see a retracement down uh, on the Australian dollar. This wedge is uh, really serious, and the bearish pressure uh, of the hist of the indicators are also uh, strong. So we have to follow. Actually, it's uh, it's not a good idea to enter now the bearish move, but it looks actually like uh, this resistance will hold, and we will see. Down move. What about the uh, New Zealandian? Uh, so uh, we did see a break of this uptrend line here on the weekly chart, right? As we can see, uh, that means that the New Zealandian will probably go and try to reach the uh, the last support around 0.37, 0.73.50. This level probably uh, this is what's about to happen. Pay attention to the RSI still holds the 50 level, right? still holds the 50 level. But the MACD is bearish, the stochastic is very bearish. So uh, actually, the, the bearish pressure is powerful here. We will probably see some uh, uh, retracement, maybe to the 20 moving average of the Bollinger Bands. But I do expect the Canadian to reach the, uh, the lower boundary on this support line. Uh, this is about this pair. About the dollar franc, well, actually, uh, I'm bearish for this pair. I'm bearish for this pair, but as the same as on the Canadian, this wedge, actually, and this weekly divergence uh, are a really rare situation, and uh, it's very, very, very risky to sell. Uh, I would prefer to be to say to stay sidelines and look for the uh, divergence to be completed right? and wait for the divergence to be completed. Uh, the the monthly chart, uh, well, actually, the monthly chart supports a uh, down move, but also on the monthly chart we can actually see. Just let me erase this line. We can see uh, these weeks from the uh, from the upper side of the uh, candle. That means that the bears are closing posi positions, as I explained to you on the dollar. Uh, on the US dollar index, right? And the bullish uh, divergence is still here despite of all. So it's very, very, very risky <laughs> to go and uh, sell the dollar franc despite it broke the last uh, resistance, the last support. Sorry, well, I wouldn't do it because of the uh, bearish divergence on the big time frames, and just because of it. Uh, about the investors, they are. Bearish for this pair, and I do expect it to reach the 090, maybe 085 also. But as I said, I would never do it because of such a divergence. What about the next uh, pair, dollar yen? Well, dollar yen surprised me, I must admit. I would never so, uh, think it will go and reach, uh, it will drop, sorry, before it reached the uh, 85 level, but it did. Uh, and now it's the time to wait for uh, uh, to wait and see what the, this pair will continue to do. A close uh, and maybe the break of uh, 81 level, which is this support, and the triangle level uh, could be a bearish sign. And uh, from this point, maybe we'll even see the dollar yen continues down to uh, 80 level, the, uh, and maybe then to uh, 75 level, which will be. And duplication of this triangle down. So let's see and uh, wait for the behavior of dollar yen. What about the uh, the crosses? Well, this is the uh, euro against the British pound. Uh, we have inv uh, inverted hammer here uh, on the, in the uh, almost the cross of stochastic. The cross of the stochastic will lead for the this pair to go down. It looks like. 
uh, we are having a diamond pattern here on the uh, dollar uh, on the euro british pound situation it looks like we are uh, we are having a, a diamond pattern right um, on on this uh, pair on this cross and uh, if it's true we should see a down move of the of this pair to the lower boundary here uh, the big 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 uh, move will begin the big move down will begin only when this uh, uptrend line will be broken. It still uh, was not broken despite of all that damage. Once it will be, uh, pay attention that it's uh, also the same line with the uh, with this diamond pattern. Right. So let's see how this pair will uh, actually behave at the beginning of the week. Uh, it looks bearish. It uh, it smells bearish. Now let's see how the week will uh, open. Um, the, f the the weekly chart also not so uh, not uh, confirms this uh, bearish move, but as you can see, uh, the O96 level was not broken for long, long run actually from the end of the last uh, year, right? From November last year. So uh, this O96 O86 level is uh, powerful. Uh, this is the 4 hour chart um, if you want to be conservative just wait uh, for the pair to close below the 20 moving average and then it would be a signal to sell uh, because as it looks la uh, right now it could also go and create a bearish a uh, bullish sorry a bullish hidden divergence around just a second around uh, the 20 moving average and bring the up move so let's see how it will develop. Uh, I, I think that this uh, key reversal will uh, cause a down move. The expectations of the investors are also bearish. What about the next pairs? The dollar, the euro against the yen. Well, this divergence uh, uh, hold itself, and it looks like we are going at least to see this uh, target, and then also a duplication, maybe around 109. Right, uh, the RSI still uh, holds the 50 level despite of all that end. The weekly chart also uh, confirms the bu the bearish expectations we had. The uh, engulfing. Let me just erase this uh, unneeded lines. We had this engulfing here, so we might see a down again of the euro yen. Right. Uh, what about the what about the commodities and the indices? Well, I want to go for the indices. I remind you that we had uh, on the S&P 500 we had this uh, pattern, right? And we had an engulfing. So I do expect a continuing of a down move of the indices. This is my expectation. I can't see, um, I can't see, and I don't believe for another up move because uh, this is a critical divergence here on the MACD. The, the RSI on the critical level, the stochastic on critical levels. Uh, there is a crab, bearish crab pattern, which means it's a very critical levels of the uh, indices, and I think we are going down. How can we join it? Uh, well, this is my expectations actually. This is the uptrend line, the daily uptrend line. Once it's broken, go short. If you are uh, if you are uh, risky traders such as I, you can uh, join um, you can join even now with stop loss above the last high. Actually, uh, with stop loss above the uh, upper uh, upper uh, boundary of the Bollinger Band, it looks like we are about to have a serious long round down. Right on some indices such as uh, the DAX, the uh, Frankfurt DAX. We all already had a break of the uptrend line, so now we actually expect for a retracement. Actually, expect for a retracement and then continuing of the down move. Uh, the same situation about uh, the the FTSE, uh, which uh, on this uh, on this <coughs> sorry on this uh, uh, index uh, we did see a break of the line, uh, and but uh, it retraced quickly uh, in but still can you see it still all the indices all the indicators 
pointing down. The sp uh, with all these divergence, I, s I can see only one direction, actually. So uh, I am very bearish. About, uh, about uh, the commodities, well, the last week I told you about the wheat. As you might remember, this in Galfen told you we are expecting a down move. Well, we had a down move. Okay? We had a critical down move here. It reached the first target, which is the 20 moving average of the Bollinger Band. I believe it's only the beginning. I think the wheat will continue to fall. Okay. So uh, how can we? You join it actually. Uh, draw a uptrend line. Okay. Once it's broken, sell it. Once it is broken again, sell it. Right? This is about the wheat. What about the corn? Well, it looked like we are going to see a down move on the corn, actually. But, uh, but, 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 this long, uh, long uh, uptrend line still was not uh, even reached. Not just broken, still was not even reached. And this uh, uptrend line was holding. It looks like it's, it's about to be broken, but it was uh, actually holding. And it's very risky to sell it yet. I don't expect the corn to fall very, very, very soon because of all these divergence. Uh, but uh, two, two situations. The first we will reach the last, the last resistance around uh, 750, uh, 750. The second situation it will break uh, this uptrend line. And then it will be a signal to sell. Right? So this is the expectations for the corn. The, about the gold and the in, uh, about the gold and the silver. Well, I told you <laughs> I am bullish as long as uh, the, the 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 divergence is not completed. I am bullish, uh, or as long as the uptrend line is not broken as well. Okay, so. I am bullish for this too, as long as the divergence is not completed. It could happen every week, as you can see, but as long as it doesn't happen, and I mean by, by happen I mean uh, we didn't see a creation of a bearish pattern, I am uh, bullish for this too. Well, another interesting pair and last pair to, uh, I, I want you to watch is the Swiss against the Japanese yen. Right? It, uh, it did create a great pattern, inverted uh, inverted pattern, and it could lead for a down move uh, of this uh, great pair. Right? The first target would be uh, the 20 moving average of the Bollinger Band. So, actually, this is uh, the first target. The second, of course, will be the lower boundary of this triangle, right? of this uh, channel. So, right? there is a resistance here that uh, uh, blocks. The pair, there is a bearish divergence, uh, so it actually could uh, create a down move, but for long run, I do expect it to raise. I do expect it to raise. Uh, so, this is about the Swiss yen, another interesting pair to follow uh, and to trade. Thank you very much for your uh, time, friends. I wish you uh, good luck and a very profitable uh, week. Enjoy the moves, they are very volatile moves. And as I said on the previous week, do not afraid to take risk. It's okay to lose one, two, three attempts because we are about to have a move. And once we have the move, it will cover all the losses attempts we had on our way. Look what happened on the wheat. Look what happened on the S&P, on the DAX, on all the indices we were followed uh, during the last three weeks, actually. Right? This is how the market behaves. So... That's my expectation. Thank you very much for your time, friends. I wish you a great week and profitable week. Vladimir, thank you.